All right, we're back with uh, another edition of Truth Masters with Texas Pit Masters. And today we've got with us... Uh, Louis Gonzalez with DD Barbecue. And where are you guys out of? San Antonio, Texas. Hey man, good luck this weekend. Thank you. All right, first up, what is your guilty pleasure? My name's DD for a reason. I like double Ds. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We want to be sponsored by double Ds. Okay, uh, celebrity crush. Emma Stone or... Kate Upton, one of the two. Dang, Kate Upton in that old video, like yes. the classic. Yeah. Oh, wow, that was good. All right, worst barbecue injury? I think burning my leg on my uh, charcoal basket. Uh, pretty bad? Yeah, it was pretty bad. No no doctor visit? or? No, hell no. Fuck the doctors. Weirdest thing you've ever eaten? I think uh, bull balls. These nuts. They were good, but until I knew what they were, I was like, oh, it's kind of fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it is very fucked up. What is one of your cooking pet peeves? I gotta be good on timing. I hate being late or rushed. Messier person, you or a significant other? Uh, definitely me, there is no significant other. I could buy myself flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miley, for his anthem. All right, um, favorite cereal? Um, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Excellent. Uh, okay, what is something that you know that others wouldn't think you would know? Snapple facts. I read a lot of them, but I can't share anyone with you. I just forget all of them. I don't, and, and furthermore, I don't think anybody else drinks an apple. All right, uh, next up. Uh, hit me with the first movie quote that comes to your mind. They, they cut me off from eating all sorts of foods that shake like dicks. <laughs> <laughs> you know which foods are shaped like dicks? The best kinds. <laughs> I don't know, it's really messed up. Super gay. No more eggplant for him tonight. Okay, <laughs> rapid fire round, ready? Okay. Uh, G.I. Joe or He-Man? G.I. Joe. Mountains or beach? Uh, beach. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Noise or silence? Silence. Your ex-girlfriend or the girl before that? Oh, goddamn. Um, the shit. The, the ex-girlfriend. <laughs> okay, Chevy or Ford? Chevy. Superman or Batman? Superman. Tortillas or bread? Tortillas. Menudo or tortilla soup? Tortilla soup, fuck menudo. Salty or sweet? Sweet. Samsung or iPhone? Uh, let's get rid of those green bubbles, man. iPhone, all the way. Pepsi or Coke? Uh, Pepsi. McDonald's or Wendy's? Let's go with Wendy's. Wendy's? Yeah, Wendy's. All right. All right. Yeah. Kelly Kapowski from Saved by the Bell or Pamela Anderson? I'll go with Kelly Kapowski. All right. <laughs> Thanks for playing, brother. Are you ready to Three, turn up the two, heat? One. Because you've just tuned in to the one and only So Smoking Gooder Show. We're coming to you live from Bullhorn Barbecue Headquarters in Cypress, Texas. This is the show where we talk all things barbecue and brews, and you better believe we're here to have a good time. Get ready for the man who knows barbecue like the back of his hand, the guy who can tell you the difference between an IPA and a stout blindfolded, and the life of every party, your barbecue pit master and the host with the most, Rob Arocha. Whether you're part of the Gooder Gang or just here for the special guests, barbecue competition updates, or maybe even to rate some boxes, strap in, fire up those smokers, and crack open a cold one. Because the So Smoking Gooder Show starts now. Yes, what is up, you beautiful barbecue people? Welcome to the show. It's a little after 8 o'clock, and you know what we do on Wednesdays at 8 o'clock Central, as our guest told me I should make sure I bring it to your attention, is what we do is we, we sit here and we gather. We watch the So Smoking Gooder show. Thank you very much for tuning in. Shout out to Nick. I will continue to say that. Nick Panagopoulos from Simple Alien and his crew over there for putting that intro together. I love it. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. However, you're tuning in. As it said, I am your show host, Rob Arocha, and uh, I appreciate it. However, you're checking us out on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, however you're doing it, I appreciate it. 
uh, if you if you're new to the program, we may have some new eyes tonight from our because of our guest, Miss Danielle Bennett, Miss Diva Q. If you're new to the program, we do this show each and every Wednesdays at eight o'clock central, and we talk barbecue with people all over the industry. You know that we we got pitmasters from that a long time been doing it, like our guest tonight, and like last week, Surge from Last Roundup Barbecue, a first time cook he's just starting out his first year and we're going to follow him so from the top to the bottom we follow people all throughout barbecue so if that's interesting to you this is the show for you so thank you very much for tuning in and you are officially part of the gooder gang the gooder gang are the people that watch this show they interact on this show you'll see them in the comments i will give them some love here in just a minute so thank you very much for tuning in however you're doing so i appreciate it we do have a wonderful guest tonight it's not her first time to the show it feels like it is because it's been a long time since i've had danielle bennett from diva q if you guys don't know miss danielle i mean if you're watching the show you know danielle or have heard of at least heard of her uh but uh, maybe we'll uncover a stone or two that you may not have known about her so I'm excited to have her on. We'll get her on here momentarily. But before we do that, Ty, if you could do a little sponsor spot and we'll get this show started, brother. Shout out to the supportive and outstanding sponsors. Rec Tag. Smoking Magic. Cosmos Q Products. k Pipeline Services. Race Crew Drum Smokers, Barbecue 321 Podcast, Texas Oil Dust, LC Barbecue, Pinkerton Texas Pit Barbecue, Frisco Ranch Cookoff at the Crossroads, War Pig Barbecue, Texas Chrome Heroes Foundation, Chicken Fried Barbecue Grind. Navy Seal Danny Deets Memorial Classic. Full Printing Wraps and Graphics. Texas Original Charcoal Products. Got Your Six Culture. We Branded Promotions and The Barbecue Store in Hempstead. Thank you for supporting the Soap Smoking Gooder Show. Oh, let me absolutely thank you guys for supporting this show. We cannot do this without you. I highlighted some last week. Uh, LC Barbecue, I saw him roll through there. Uh, we did a promo for him. Uh, he'll be unleashing that here real soon. Like I told Ty earlier, Ty, come in here real quick, Bubba. Uh, like I told Ty earlier, I've been working on my editing skills. Phil asked me to do a video for his class, and I had some, some film for him. We've, we've done a few classes with him. You probably know that or not. But mm -hmm. uh, I was able to put that, and I uh, I put it together a nice little video. I'll let him premiere that when it comes to, but uh, mm -hmm. it's working. Oh, out, chicken so. fried with chicken fried. Well, no, it's for his classes that's coming it's up. Just so. for his classes. Yeah, okay. just for his classes. So he'll be premiering that pretty soon, I'd imagine. So, but that being said, I'm getting better at it. So more videos to come, like that competition video I posted. So if you're on YouTube right now, make sure you give us a like and uh, hit that little thumbs up thing. And apparently the algorithm is a big thing. So let's get that going. But Ty, welcome to the show. We got a great guest tonight, man. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, just the short time I got to talk to her earlier, I got I got a, a bunch of questions. So. All right, I'm really I love interested it. to hear what she's got to say. More tie is a good thing, like I said last week. So uh, let's drop down. I'm gonna give some shout out to the Gooder Gang, and then we we'll get Danielle on here in just a second. All right, first in Ty will roll down as I go through them. First in ZZ Top Fan, first time to be the first in. I appreciate you, my man Carlos Calzada. He bested you. Where's Daddy Dutch? Daddy Dutch is in the house. I see him down there. Third and I love it. Larry Vaughn checking in from wet South Jersey. All right. The dude barbecue. What's up? Gooder gang. How are you? My man, there's surge right there. Another so smoking Wednesday. Absolutely. Smoking magic. I talked about them last week. Howdy gang. What's up? Tom Ball VFW. If they're watching still, they'll be drinking right now. There's Taz checking in on Twitch. Hello from Aruba. All right. What's up, Taz? Kevin Hernandez. What is going on? Uh, what's up, Rob and Ty? Corby Simpkins, Doodle Q checking in. Britt Davis, how are you? Steven Peacock from Saginaw, Texas. Yeah, put where you're from. Why not, Britt? Uh, Rini Sanchez, what's up, Gooder Gang? Two Sauced Birdies, what's going on? Bobby Delgado from Quattro D. Luis Coronado, what's going on? Michael Wickersham, 
There's a new one. First time listener. Love the Diva Q. Of course, she's amazing. Michael, subscribe. We want to see you more often. All right, Jared McCrory checking in. Ashley is checking in. What's up? Hey, Gooder Gang. Max checking in. What's going on? I'll tell you later. Custom catering. That is uh, Chase Chance, I believe. Jesse Wooten checking in. Brian Keen. Uh, he killed it last week in Alvin and Sarah Joe Slayton going for a first time. All right. Ch oh, that's Sarah from the chopping block. Uh, she put, uh, she hooked me up with a badass brisket last week. Robert Shadle checking in. Robert, you never check in. I wonder why you might be checking in today. Uh, but uh, thank you for tuning in, man. I appreciate it. All right. That is the Gooder Gang. We got more coming in. They'll be coming in. Chase, there it is. Not Chance, Chase. Chase, what's up, Chase? How are you, Bubba? All right. I told her we get her in about 10 after. It's 11 after. Uh, this lady, like I mentioned, guys, if you don't know Miss Diva Q, uh, then you don't really follow barbecue because she is all over the barbecue. She's got her thumbprint all over barbecue, man. She's she's a barbecue ambassador. A, one of the one of the best ones out there. She's a sweetheart. She's a Traeger Grill Pro. Uh, she's a cookbook author. Soon to be another one. Uh, she's a barbecue world champion. She's a TV personality. She's an instructor with over 20,000, I think she's 22,000 students or alumni that have taken her class. That's amazing right there. So 22,000 people have gotten some knowledge from Ms. Danielle and are going out there and spreading the barbecue world. She's a chef, definitely a world traveler. And now a three-time guest on the So Smoking Gooder show. Let's bring her in, Ty. We're talking about Miss Danielle Bennett of Diva Q. Welcome back, sweetheart. It's always awesome to have you on here. Thanks for having me, Rob. Appreciate being back. Um, yeah, I miss Houston. <laughs> nah, right you need to, off, you need to come top. back. Off the top, I miss Houston. Always. <laughs> Well, you need to come back. We miss you here in Houston. Uh, how are things? You know, we had a brief little conversation earlier, but how are things, Danielle? How are, how are, how are, what's new in Danielle Diva Q world right now? So we're sitting in my backyard, as uh, one side of my backyard, and, uh, you know, I'm actually home for a couple of weeks, which is unusual. <laughs> we were talking about that. Um, I think I might be the most traveled person in barbecue as well. I'm not quite sure if anybody else travels more than I do, but, uh, um, I'm really busy. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, the last few years, of course, since COVID's over, um, you know, we were grounded during COVID and, and kind of things took off running. And uh, like last year, I was in 18 different countries uh, for barbecue um, and personal. This year, I'll be in another, I don't know, 12, 14 countries. I've already traveled uh, to, let's see, it's March. I've already traveled to eight countries so far this year, um, three, four barbecues so far. Um, and, and it just keeps going and going and going. Yeah. Yeah, that, that you're traveling all over the place, man. I've seen you. You just got back. We'll, we'll talk about where you were. You just got back from Australia, meat stock. Uh, that that looks like an amazing. Well, let's let's do it right now. You know, uh, smoking magic there. Well, she was like, make sure you ask her about meat stock. And I was like, I already got this. I, I'm interested because I want to go. And apparently this is like how many festivals do they have per year? Because it's not like yeah. one. No, so actually I started, um, I went on the road for a month, which is pretty normal when I go to Australia and New Zealand. Um, New Zealand finally opened up since COVID. So this is the first time I've been back to New Zealand in four years. Um, so I was back in New Zealand for the first uh, first meat stock there. Um, and then there are three meat stocks in Australia. So there's Toowoomba, Bendigo, and uh, Sydney. And then after that, there's Brazil. So I stayed for Toowoomba and Bendigo, and while I was there, I taught classes, did some, you know, TV, radio appearances as well while I was there. Um, did a lot of, you know, kind of one-on-one -on -one teaching, uh, demonstrations, of course, um, team building events. And, you know, I work Traeger Grills internationally as well, so not just Traeger Grills US. Um, I am their global world ambassador. Um, and so one of the cool things is I'm, I'm one of, of some of their ambassadors that get the opportunity to go do this. So it's a lot of kind of, not just about the barbecue world but it's all about interpersonal relationships and building you know building these incredible communities all over the world of the, of the Traeger world um and Traeger nation which is pretty amazing and then of course showing sharing and showing my love of all things barbecue is kind of key for me um so that's kind of a you know it's, it's non-stop like you're there and you're working really long days and i work with some amazing teams all over the world that are just so incredible um, that I am so beloved of and getting to meet new people all over the world. So crazy busy, always. Awesome. Hey, real quick, your your mic is 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 I don't know something earlier when we were talking it was crystal clear. Now it's something happened I don't know what, mm -hmm. but uh, 
you you come and kind of go in and out to where you're clear and then you're not. So I'm not sure what's Papa. going. Uh, I think you turned it. Did you turn it off? No, nope, turn it up actually. Okay, well maybe that's it. Let's hear. Well, well I'm glad everybody. It'll work. It it it'll, will. We will definitely work it up. But uh, yeah, talk about being. Uh, what does that mean to you? I just mentioned twenty two thousand students that have taken gone through the Diva Q classroom. You know, Bruce, and I'm, I'm one of them. I remember way back in the day when I was just getting started, uh, just getting started. You did an ACE hardware show in Cypress, Texas, and I went to check you out. And we got, I have a, I should have posted it, but I have a picture from that day. Uh, but that was the first time that we had met. And just, uh, you know, I remember that class and just sitting there. And uh, I remember you were a TV personality already at the time. I was like, look, that's Diva Q right there. And then, uh, so, since then, that was probably 10, it feels like 10 years ago, 10, you know, Easily. 10 or 12 years ago. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, now look at you. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Well, but, you know, one of, the, one of the things about coming to Texas, I remember some of those first classes in Texas. And, I, and, and the, the reason the, the classes in Texas stand out to me is because, first and foremost, I first originally learned how to make brisket in Texas from John Meller. And the Meller family, the yeah. Black family, and Southside Market, they all helped me um, learn how to make brisket, brisket. So that's the Bracewells um, and the Blacks. And then, of course, John Meller, who's since passed on since then, and then Ali, um, who's now continuing the L.A. Uh, Law Barbecue um, mm -hmm. uh, legacy uh, since, uh, since uh, the passing. Um, so the, the fact is that Texas is near and dear to my heart to begin with. But one of the great things about that class, it's funny enough, I remember those first Texas classes very clearly. And the reason is because of this right behind me, this pellet grill right behind me. And, you know, 10, 12 years ago, you showed up to Texas um, for the pellet grill and you were like, oh, my God, <laughs> have you lost your mind? I, because, I, I do remember because, that. Because I originally had 65 barbecues. So anybody who thinks I've only ever had, you know, pellet grills doesn't know my history. Um, I started with offset and uh, Weber Smoky Mountain and the Traeger Bill Tech right from the get-go. So I have reverse flow gravity, um, all of the different types of grills that you, you currently have out there. I own them all. <laughs> I just have 19 Traegers now and a few others. Um, so one of the things about those Texas classes is that they were really kind of an introduction, I think, to a lot of Texans at that point, that you could still make a kick-ass brisket on a pellet grill. And I think that that was very much shocking. I remember after that class that I had a lot of very large, very, very big Texan men come and shake my hand. And they were very sincere. Um, and they came because they they really didn't believe it. I think you're and talking were, about Case. Uh, <laughs> that might have been one of them. Um, uh, but you, truly, and one of the great things is, is that um, there's been a lot of change in the industry and there's been a lot of acceptance. And that's a good thing because there's room for everybody at the table. Absolutely. I was cooking on a Traeger back in the day. You know, I'm, uh, I remember, you know, people were like, Get, are those even allowed in a competition? You know, I, I didn't have just the Traeger, you know, I had another, but that was part of my little arsenal and people were like complaining, hey, you know, and I remember like, you know, I think you even said, hey, you get beat by a pellet smoker. That's your problem, right? You know, and and, and uh, yeah, it, 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 that's just kind of the way it was. Now, everybody has some sort of pellet smoker in their arsenal you know that the times have changed you know that you're talking like 10 11 years ago what's up tom yeah. 10 11 years ago till now um you, uh, to me it's 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 great to have that in your bag right at least that in your arsenal you know you either offset a lot of people are cooking on drums now but you will see pellet smokers all throughout a barbecue competition and uh you know you're a big you know pioneer of that you know promoting traeger and when you were doing and like i mentioned twenty two thousand classes or students because mm -hmm. not only not all of those students are backyard guys right a lot of those guys are yeah. are either budding you know just starting out or now competition guys you know you get the however you get the the bug doing this competition thing uh it it, it hooks you one way or another but you know pellet smokers are a great way to introduce yourself into smoking you know or perfecting something or at least shaking uh flavor profiles but now People are winning with them all the time. You see it each and every weekend all across the country and the world. Now, you, you would know about that more than I would. But uh, pellet smokers are, are, are all over. And if you don't have one in your arsenal, I've got two. I got a, I got a bull and a, and a bullseye rec tech. But if you don't have one of those in your or a pellet smoker of some sort in your arsenal, then uh, you need to. You definitely need to. 
Well, one of the things I like to say is that they're not smokers too. You know, one of the key things for me is that we call them wood fire grills because if you go to my Instagram and you take a look at what I cook, it's not just smoking food. Um, one of the key Ace things for me, Ace. one of the things for me is the versatility. And for that reason alone, I mean, I'm out here today and I was, you know, prepping Easter breads and doing uh, different things that do not involve um, any of the, um, you know, the smoking point, basically. So I love the versatility too. So nonetheless, no matter what, uh, yeah, 20, 20, 22,000 students now um, over the last 18 years. I'm coming up on my 18th year anniversary in barbecue. Um, and so it's been uh, quite the journey and quite interesting. And, you know, here I am in my little house and, and having a good time and enjoying it. And, uh, you know, my backyard's full of barbecues and my pool and <laughs> other things. And, and, and life is good. So 18 years, what, what were you doing before barbecue, before this thing entered your life? Uh, what were you doing prior to that? So I think one of the things that people don't realize is that I actually have double degrees. <laughs> huh. Here I we go. Have, Stone unturned. I told you we might turn yeah, something over. I, I have a three-year degree in business marketing. Up, and Marshall. I also have another uh, three-year degree in human resource operations. And so for 10 years corporately, I was an HR operations manager. And so I used to manage about 175 to 250 uh, employees in a retail establishment called uh, Dollars HBC, which is uh, kind of like a somewhere, it was a hybrid between Target and Walmart. And so we were at the retail store level. And then additionally, we did, um, well, I did a lot of labor relations because I was in the unionized store because they sent me there because I was a little tougher. And so we did the union negotiations and, you know, all that kind of stuff as well. So I did that corporately for 10 years first. And barbecue is a lot more fun. Yeah, barbecue is a lot more fun. I, I, I can imagine that HR. I mean, come on. But, but that's amazing. I didn't know you had double degrees and you were doing that for, for a long time. Um, and how did you stumble into this thing? Was this something that you were doing in the backyard or what, what's going on with that? So my, I have three incredible children, uh, Lexi, Ella, and Gabe. And Lexi is 25, Ella is 19, Gabe is 17. And one of the great things is, is that uh, I, I was able to um, stay home uh, for a little while. Um, one of the things about that is that uh, my middle child, my daughter, was deathly ill and spent uh, months and months and months in the hospital oh, at, no. Sick Kids, at Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto. So I and my ex-husband at that point had decided that it would be best if I stayed home with her and certainly uh, take care of the home and be available to go to the hospital regularly. So once that happened, we also had a son after that, um, my son Gabriel. And one of the key things is that Gabriel was just a couple months old and I was born under my tree. So I started uh, going to culinary school classes at Liaison Culinary College in Canada and started taking a whole bunch of culinary classes online to be uh, a paper chef at that point. Um, and then a friend of mine called me and asked me to judge a barbecue contest. And uh, my, uh, my experience with barbecue up to that point being Canadian, uh, Canadian born, um, one of the things is, is that my experience was only like roadside, you know, kind of chicken sandwiches. You know, pulled pork, nothing like to the extreme of like, you know, going to a Texas, you know, brisket haven, you know, or right, right. At, or the Carolinas or whatever. And so I judged uh, on site and uh, blind boxes. And I had some stuff I really liked, some stuff I didn't like, and some stuff I wouldn't have given a dog. And one of the things is I've always been a really, obviously, a very food centric person. And uh, one of the key things for me at that point is that I kind of looked at all that and I went, I think I can do this. And uh, that's how it started. That was 18 years ago. Um, so my son was just a couple months old and that's when I started and have been doing it ever since. Um, and you know, the, the, the trajectory of my, my career really changed when I came down to the U S which was 10 years ago, got divorced, came down here. Um, and it's been great. I've been living in Florida now for just around nine years. No plans to move, <laughs> no plans, no plans to move out of the U S. Um, but definitely it's, uh, definitely continued to grow. Um, and I and I've grown it how I wanted to grow it, so it's been good. I, I I caught something. You said Canadian born. Are you now a dual citizen or what working, on it? working on oh, it? Oh, working on it. All right. Yeah, All I, right. I, I, for anybody who wants to know, yeah, I'm a legal green card. I got my green card. Got to travel with my green card all the time. It's a 10 year one. They keep renewing at 10 years, so apparently they like me. So it's all good. Uh, but a little funny fact about that, actually, um, when I came here, I was the first person ever to get a U.S. designation. Hey, Roy. Uh, U.S. designation as a barbecue expert, the first one in the history of the United States. Uh, really? That, that is, yeah, it's called an O-1 designation of extraordinary talent. Um, and that's, that's a kudos to me. And I'm going to fully say that, that we worked hard to get that because I didn't want to just go come in as a chef. So 
I wanted to come in as a professional barbecue, and that was really important to me. Um, and so there you go, everybody. You can do it. If, if, if you know, you can even change the American government. <laughs> you need to. You need to. You need to put that on your website. First a barbecue expert yeah. uh, to come in. Yeah. <laughs> foreign US, barbe- yeah. foreign yeah. barbecue US, expert. Yes. Foreign designated U.S. barbecue expert. Yeah. And to learn under the Blacks family or the Mueller family, my goodness, that's uh, yeah. that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Now, now you can be an honorary Texan after uh, you know, after it's all said and done. You've been to Texas quite a bit. You just you were just here uh, oh, all the time. Yeah, I am. Um, you know, it's so funny is that there's there's one thing I have regretted in my life. There's I have one very large regret is that right before COVID, no joke, Rob, you and Diane know this. I was looking at a property in Magnolia. Mm-hmm. Um, and and because I didn't want to live in downtown Houston, <laughs> no, um, don't and, I, and I had I had been looking at property over in Katy, and, and I found a property in Magnolia, and then COVID hit, mm. and I didn't purchase it, and I have regretted it ever since <laughs> because it was just a piece of property to to grow on in the future. Um, yeah, Texas once again, and Texas feels like home to me every time I'm there. It, it's just a you know I get off the plane, it's like a big exhale, and I just feel like I've come home, which is. How lovely is that, right? When you, mm-hmm. when you get off at a place in a different state and get off the plane, and you're like, oh, okay, there's HEB. Okay, everything feels normal again. Or, okay, I can get the good tortillas. Or, you know, I, I <laughs> is there know. <laughs> is there anything like HEB anywhere else in the country or in the world? No, no. And the funny thing is, is that like like you said, I was just in I was just in San Antonio, like literally three days ago, um, and I I had gotten off the plane from Australia. I was home for 36 hours, then I got on another plane, and I got to, got on a plane to San Antonio. Um, and it's one of the things that I am so proud about is that um, I get asked to be a motivational speaker because I've had to overcome some really crazy, insanely horrible situations, um, challenging obstacles in my life. And so there is a wonderful college in San Antonio called St. Phillips College. The, um, and St. Phillips College has a incredible program there called WINTO, which is Women in Non-Traditional Occupations. So what the college does, they bring three to 400 high school students cool. in. And we talk about opportunities for women, young ladies, um, to go into fields that are non-traditional and how to overcome some of the barriers and deal with you know some of the crap that comes along with that. Um, and, uh, and removing some of those barriers. So one of the things is that I've, I've had to do this uh, incredible opportunity um, three times. And so I literally flew in, got my rental car, went directly to HEB, got my tortillas, uh, got a couple <laughs> other things from, no jokes, got a couple other things from HGB, went to my uh, hotel, and I always get a hotel like with a little, um, like a little uh, kitchen, you know? Yep. So I, I put the tortillas in the freezer right away, put all the things I could put in the freezer because they would freeze hard overnight, got checked out the next morning, put them into, um, <laughs> put them in my suitcase, and got home, and I literally had tortillas. Such, so good. So, and you know, we have such great. We have good tortillas here in uh, in, in Florida. Don't get me wrong. We have an incredible amount of food trucks. But the thing is, they're not H E B butter tortillas. And everybody knows the butter tortillas at, at H E B are. Yeah, they're, just, they're amazing. I got. I have them in my uh, in my pantry good. right now. <laughs> Yeah, that, Bill Purvis now lives in Montgomery uh, County. You, that might have been the property you were looking at during COVID. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, that that's a great uh, travel lesson right there. Go freeze, put it in your suitcase, fly home, and there wow. you go. Now, that is interesting what you just said. You were a motivational speaker for a lot of young ladies, uh, for women in non-traditional occupations, right? That's what you said. You yeah. are a woman in barbecue, which is definitely male-dominated. Uh, especially, you know, like you just talked about, you've been in 18 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure it's a little more forgiving now, but back then you were probably breaking in with, but you just had like Jackie Milligan, who I don't know if you know this, but Jackie hit first place ribs yeah, at, at Houston. Houston, at Houston, Houston. Rock and Radio. Don't yes. think I don't pay attention to those things. Okay, I good. Pay attention to that. Yes. Jackie, that was really good to see. Yeah, she and and you inspire. She said so inspiring. You inspire a lot of these ladies to to go and venture out. You know, we we've got there's a lot of badass women cooks that uh, maybe are, are in the shadow of their husband or whatever. And you got some that are actually out there doing it. But but man, some of these ladies out there are are just killing it. Just you know, doing a con or ca- category or two. And I'd like to see them maybe like Jackie. Jackie has taken over. She's the she's the the head woman there for uh, Team Chupacabra, but a lot of these ladies that are watching, it's it's definitely an inspiration. You definitely are a lady in a male dominated sport uh, that has excelled. You know, you've been 
I feel like you are what a lot of us, you know, barbecue guys would love. To, we'd love to be traveling. We'd love to be going to across all across the world, having, you know, big sponsors and stuff like that. That is an inspiration to a lot of people, especially the women that are watching. Yeah. What is it? How does that make you feel when you hear? I'm sure you hear it all the time, but it's it's got to be pretty cool every time you hear it. Here, here's what I'll say about that. Um, I, I don't want to be just an inspiration to women. I want to be an inspiration to everybody. And, and, and truly, I, like you said, I, I, I tr truly mean that. Um, because I think one of the key things for me is that I, I'd like us to get to the point where we don't have to have this conversation. That it just becomes commonplace. That sure. it, whether you're male or female, uh, it doesn't really matter. You're just a kick-ass pit master, uh, in all honesty. That'd be so cool if we got to that point where we didn't have to have that conversation. Um, and so one of the things for me is that... Uh, you know, motivating people, I, you know, one of the things that I think people forget about is often the hard work that goes behind all of that. Um, there are massive, massive sacrifices that you've got to make when you travel like I do. Um, there's also incredibly long days. Um, these teams, and when we're out there, I know it looks glamorous online, but I think what people don't realize is that a lot, a lot of times these are 12, 14, 16 hour days. We are literally getting off a plane, going right to the, the butcher, the abattoir. We're deciding on the cuts, you know, and, and in some countries that I go to, say for example, like like last year in South Africa um, and, and Dubai and things like that, especially South Africa, when I was in South Africa, I literally had to go into their butcher's um, room where they're hanging all the cows and the cattle um, and literally had to teach them how to cut a, an American style full pack of brisket. So, you know, it, it's not just about barbecue skills, okay? So it's, it's barbecue skills, it's interpersonal skills, it's butchery skills. So if, if you go back on my Instagram video, you know, to last year's South Africa, you can actually see an entire video of me showing people how to cut a brisket off of a cow. And, and a lot of people, you know, they, they see the nails, they see the eyelashes, and, you know, I'm the diva of barbecue and I get it, okay? But behind, you know, that, there's some serious skill sets that have brought me to this place and a kick-ass, massively determined work ethic and I think that that's what people often forget that none of this shit none of this career none of this pathways to success were handed to me I worked my ass off to get all of it and I think that that sometimes people forget the you know it's the uh, it's Rob it's the just um the people that post oh it must be nice category <laughs> <laughs> I bet you hate those guys <laughs> I, I, la I often laugh because I'm like Dude, I was up at 3.30 in the morning, um, you know, trimming whatever, get, you know, must, must be nice my ass. But you know what? At this point, it is nice. You know why? Because I damn well deserve it. I've worked my ass off and I work with kick-ass amazing clients. And so at the end of the day, that's all that matters. I'm happy. Yeah, uh, Marcio, he's in the comments. That's right. All barbecue folks should know butchery. And, that, and we've got a female mm -hmm. butcher, Sarah. I just saw her comment. I got to meet Sarah last weekend in Alvin. She is a female butcher yep. for the chopping block here in, Al in uh, oh, amazing. Webster. Yeah, so she does this thing. And uh, there she is yep. right there. She said she got to meet a few ladies in Alvin this past week. And it gave me more inspiration to attend events and learn more yeah. of the cooking side. Uh, you've got, I mean, her, young. this young lady has a really great uh opportunity to learn and, and obviously she's already she's already a butcher that that yeah. right there is definitely important when you understand the cuts of meat and and, and i don't i'm not a butcher but uh mm -hmm. the fact that you can go in there and get a slab and teach uh, a butcher shop how to get an american packer brisket is amazing where did you learn something like that how did you figure that out or did you i know oh, that's that was definitely me learning so many many years ago um along with when i first started taking chef classes um there is a butcher store in toronto ontario um that had butchery classes um and most of them were hog related um one of the key things for me is an insatiable need to learn things 24 7. i'm always in a quest for learning um and i've never stopped that so whether it's uh you know, a butchery technique or maybe some barbecue fusion flavor profiles or maybe a new, you know, new power source for a grill or whatever the case may be. I, I'm insatiable when it comes to learning stuff. And so one of the things for me is always asking questions, always wanting to know more about whatever it is I'm doing. You know, it, it's funny is that butchers and welders always show up on the barbecue circuit. Um, they always, they always show up on the barbecue circuit, no matter where you are in the world. And one of the great things is I've got to spend some really great time with welders over the years, uh, you know, laying some gorgeous dimes, you know, you know, making some beautiful pits, um, to 
respecting the craft of butchery. Uh, one of the things that meat stock in Australia is actually the butcher wars. And you want to talk about talented butchery. It I've is seen jaw, some of the jaw, videos on YouTube. Jaw, yeah. It, 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 Rob, it is jaw dropping how incredible some of this butchery is and the speed and efficiency at which they, they do it. It's just, it is literally I'm in awe of their their skill set. That's that that's awesome. And the fact that you had the opportunity to do that uh, and learn from those guys and to see I've seen those Butcher War, Wars uh, videos on YouTube and it is it's a big production. That thing is it's badass. It's it intense. is badass. Yeah. That is badass. So um you, you, you obviously we talked about meat stock, but how cool for somebody a lot of these people, you know, like smoking magic, they're gonna be going to the Sydney one. I think that's yeah. coming up pretty soon. Yeah. Um, what can they expect? Because to me, that just looks like <laughs> something that we don't have over here. The barbecue festivals there look completely different than a barbecue. A barbecue festivals here seem like this is our product. Here, try this little sample. Over there, they're, I feel like they're giving you a freaking whole leg of lamb and just eating it or whatever. It looks amazing. I don't know how it is uh, once I you're think, there, but uh, I talk, think the tell us about it. The edited videos that you're seeing are obviously doing the, the work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so one of the things about Meatstock is that Meatstock has uh, been able to, and that's Jay Beaumont. Um, he, he's the one that actually owns, I believe, all the rights to Meatstock. And it is a company, of course, right? So what they've yeah. done is they combine a few things. So they've combined a strongman competition, which as a former powerlifter, I love that part too. Another um, stone unturned. I didn't know you were a powerlifter. <laughs> that's why I have. That's why I have no knees now. <laughs> that's why I don't do it anymore. Um, so uh, they've got the strongman competition. They've got the butchery wars. They have the uh, the dad bod contest, which is hilarious. Oh, let's go! They've got the best mullet contest as well. They have um, mullet depending on which, Yeah. It's, oh, I'm telling you, it's the mullets there are spectacular. Um, they also have depending on which meat stock they have PBR. Uh, so they got the bull racing. And the bull riding, which is cool as hell, of course, being from you know a, a beloved Texas point of view, that's something really cool. It's the rodeo, of course, yep, absolutely uh, to watch. Then they have the musical stage as well on top of that, so incredible musical acts all weekend long. And then on top of that, there is a barbecue contest. And then on top of that, then they have an insane amount of barbecue vendors. So you've got fusion vendors, you've got traditional, you know, American style barbecue, you've got other, you know different kind of grilling and, and other components. Then they also have, you know, their sweets and treats kind of section. And then on top of that, then you have the barbecue companies there as well. Um, and then we have the massive onstage demo stage for barbecue and grilling, which is where I'm usually located. Um, so it's this conglomerate of all of these things going on and it is a massive festival. So just to give you an example, Sydney will have approximately 20, 22,000 people come through the doors in three days. Wow. 22,000. Yeah. Um, Bendigo, Toowoomba, the ones I was just at, uh, 18 to 16,000, somewhere in there, each each one. So you have, like, when you do a demo there, you're talking to, it could be a couple hundred, it could be a thousand people. Um, it really does depend on the setup, the day. Um, and, and can it be done in the U.S.? I'm sure it could be to some extent. However, it would be a very expensive ticket. It is an expensive entry fee to get into meat stock. So the people that are there really do want to be there, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, there are different health regulations, of course, in the United States versus Australia or New Zealand. So they have to work around those. There would be definitely some logistical nightmares and challenges to work on. Um, I remember years ago, Ronnie Kate they used to do the Smoke on the Water series. And I remember we did uh, we did one in Little Rock, uh, Arkansas, a few years ago, and it was like a smaller scale meat stock. So I could definitely see it happening here in the United States. Um, and then after Sydney, there's uh, Brazil. So there's there's two more to go. Meat stock Brazil. That's that's. Uh, oh, wow. yeah. Have you been there? No, not yet. Okay. No. <laughs> Years. There. There, there you go. Uh, well, let's, you know, a lot of people that watch this show are competition people, right? And yep. so you definitely uh, are a world champion. You've, you've done this, been there, done that. I feel like uh, Canada puts out some badass women and uh, barbecuers. I mean, we talked about that. Let's not do it. But you, I feel like you're a trendsetter. And then we have, you know, Miss Janice from Smell -Q out of Canada. She she comes down here and does well in, in Texas. And she's she's also she's been here quite a few times. But uh, the barbecue scene, you know, you, the competition scene, you've been, like I said, been there, done that. You're not doing it so much anymore. 
nope. but talk about when you kind of broke in and and it's definitely changed now i feel like you know we talk about classes on this show all the time and you're one of the people that have inspired a lot of people to go out and do it but classes definitely help right back in the day there was no nobody doing similar classes that they do now but the competition scene has changed uh you know what was it like then and where were you competing mainly uh you weren't down here doing it but i was actually i was mostly in michigan and pennsylvania and new york yeah yeah, Michigan, I actually my very my very first grand championship, my very first uh, U.S. grand championship was Smoke on the Allegheny in Pennsylvania. It was a KCBS contest, and I took three out of four categories. Oh, there you go, there you go. Uh, I will never forget that contest. So one of the things for me is that, um, yeah, you know, now the learning curve is a cakewalk compared to when I started. Yeah, it's totally like it's ridiculous how easy it is to learn now. So when I started, there there wasn't like the YouTube tutorials. There wasn't like. A, any of the things that we have now for instructional videos on reels or, you know, um, Instagram posts or whatever the case may be. So if you wanted to actually learn how to make a brisket, you got your ass on a plane in my case, <laughs> and you came to Texas and, and you traveled to South Carolina and the Carolinas, uh, North Carolina, um, Kentucky for mutton, Kansas city for pork and, and definitely travel around and learn for as much as you possibly can. Um, and then I took classes early on with Butcher Barbecue. Um, definitely one of the best ones I've ever taken was a Butcher Barbecue class. Um, David definitely, Yes, yeah, David, yeah. David uh, out of Oklahoma. Yeah. Outstanding instructor. And I mean, to this day, still, if you see that class come up, take that class. Whether you are a competitor or not, I think that he is probably one of the very best instructors I've ever attended in my life. Um, obviously, brisket camp. And, you know, I got the chance to go and represent Treasure Grill at Bristol Camp a couple years ago, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, definitely being an instructor there, you know, there's a whole other level there to, to learn about brisket. Um, one of the things for me is that learning, 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 learning. And now I'm more on the meat science and food science side of things. Uh, not so much competitions. I haven't done a competition in two years. Um, I, I, I don't see myself going out. I like my corporate gigs and I like traveling for me now <laughs> more than anything. You know, hey, after eight I, I'm sure. Years, I'm sure the I'm money's ready. better in the corporate world than <laughs> than uh, what we're doing down here in uh, in barbecue contests, <clears throat> hoping and praying for a call. And uh, you know, you get that. So you know, we just we just talked about Weatherford uh, was a contest down here. They were paying out big money, but you know, not a lot of them. You know, you you get a tenth place call out of a hundred teams, and you can walk away with fifty bucks. Congratulations! <laughs> you know, you're you're now only four hundred and fifty dollars in the hole. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm exactly. sure. Uh, I'm sure it pays better to go and instruct and go and travel and doing all of that as well versus doing a barbecue contest each and every weekend. You know, the thing is, is that even even now though, um, and and my trailer is actually going up for sale real soon. Uh, my trailer that I designed every square inch of uh, my custom barbecue trailer, I'm going to put it up for sale. Yeah, I finally made that decision, um, and so that's going to go up for sale. I decided uh, two years ago that, you know, I had, I had I'd literally finished my barbecue, barbecue competition bucket list, I guess you could say. Um, you know, I won enough individual world championship titles. I never won an all in overall, um, but yeah. definitely, you know, many between the Jack Daniels, the American Royal, um, and, and I've won enough. And I know my shit inside and out. And it's not to say I know everything, but I definitely know my own shit inside and out. <laughs> And I'm really happy with what I've achieved and accomplished. And um, I don't feel the need to prove it anymore. And one of the things for me is that I wanted to travel to see the world um, for my own sake and my own time, um, because that's really, really important to me is to get to experience the world and not because of barbecue, but because I really do want to travel and experience the world. So like last year I took off to, uh, to a few countries. I went to Scotland and Ireland and Wales and uh, England twice. Um, went down to South Africa, went to Noumea, New Caledonia, went to Vanuatu, then, you know, travel around a lot to the Caribbean and I love doing that. And Heck that makes yeah. me happy. That sounds that amazing. Makes me, that, that makes me happy. So, I mean, I love, I still love and miss the barbecue competition world though. And, and I'll give you an example. We were leaving meat stock, uh, Bendigo and we were walking out and it's that moment you know <clears throat> that wonderful moment where your meats are on and you're just kind of sitting around and you're having a bourbon or you're having a whiskey shout out to my friends at whistle pig hey guys miss you um uh and you're sitting there and you're drinking a whiskey and you're just sitting around with your friends and you're chatting about your day and i miss those moments i miss the moments where you're just 
there was, you know, complete uh, barbecue zen life. Um, you know, I remember sitting around my Traggers and just like, I'm just my happy little world. You know, I got my phone, I got a book, I got my whiskey, I'm sipping away. <laughs> And I'm just in my happy little world. And that, that, that incredible surge that you get, um, the adrenaline rush when you're, you know, you're getting your boxes turned in and everything's looking good or, you know, everything's not going well and you have to overcome and adapt and, and do those situations. And then hearing your name call, that's a lot of endorphins. Um, but those endorphins come at a cost. <laughs> they do. And I want but I want those costs to go over to the travel category now. No, <laughs> so it's I'm, uh I'm out here it, cheering for all my friends and I and I, and I love seeing all my friends' success, but yeah. No, you it, it definitely uh comes at a, at a cost. Uh but it is cool to be out there with your boys and your barbecue homies and uh we yeah. have a we, we do something on it's not time for that yet, but uh I want you to think about we we do something uh called the barbecue mount rushmore to where you have four people you put on your mount rushmore, people that have inspired you, helped you along the way or whatever. People that's special to you. And then you can put one in the gift shop down at the bottom. Uh, somebody that almost made it up there, but not quite. I, that's my favorite part of this whole thing is the gift shop person. Uh, but then also uh, your barbecue homie. Back when you were competing or even now, somebody you want with you during these traveling times. You know, a barbecue personality, not so much a significant other. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so of all those places that you've done barbecue, what has been your favorite uh, experience or locale or, you know, moment that just kind of pops in your head. You kind of think back on that. Uh, that was pretty cool, right? That was, a, that was a, that was a pretty damn good barbecue moment. Um, I think the year that I got four perfect one eighties at the American Royal, I, I think that that's probably the year that can't be topped. Um, that, 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 uh, nobody's ever gotten four perfect one eighties at the American Royal. Not, not ever. And one was for vegetables, one was for potato, one was for dessert, and one was for sausage. Um, nobody in the history of the American Royal has ever gotten four 180s at one contest. Um, so that so that was pretty cool. Um, the year that I got called for the World Championship of Sausage, because, uh, and I don't think a lot of people realize this, is that I had done it two years in a row. Um, and I had gotten a perfect, perfect 180 two years in a row at the American Royal out of hundreds and hundreds of competitors. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, back, and doing that back to back was pretty special. Um, of course, the Jack Daniels World Pork, Jack Daniels uh, Grilling Championship. Those were really cool world championships. Uh, best wings on the planet twice. I won that too uh, with Tyson um, and a couple other companies. Um, however, I will say this. None of those awards matter. They don't mean shit um, compared to my kids saying that they're proud of me. Like truly. Um in all honesty, I mean, I, I, don't get me wrong. I, I'm very grateful for all the awards that I've had. I, I'm grateful for all the experiences I've had. I have traveled to the, literally to Tromso, Norway and barbecued on a mountaintop three hours from the Russian border. Um, I have done some of the coolest shit you will ever imagine and stuff I can't even talk about with VIP clients where they put me on a private plane, fly me down, I cook for them for the weekend, I sign an NDA and I fly back. There is shit that I have done that I will never be able to talk about. Uh, but nothing in all of that compares to when my kids turn to me and say, mom, you know, I'm really proud of you for doing your dream. Nothing and nothing matters. Like seriously, all the rest of the stuff is just fluff and cake. Um, but that's the real shit. You know, when your kids say that they're proud of you, um, I think that that's, that's the best feeling in the world because um, like I said, those sacrifices had to be made. And, and, you know, my kids are all going to university and in college now they're amazingly happy, healthy, amazing little humans. That's that awesome. I love hanging out with them. Um, I get to fly them around the world um, and, and come and see me and, and I go see them. Um, so when it, when it comes to moments What's in up, life, Wes? I, when it comes to uh, moments in life, uh, competitions are great. I've had some really amazing, amazing. I mean, I've been to the Super Bowl three times. I've been to the World Series twice because of barbecue of all things. Isn't that crazy? That's awesome. So, I mean, I mean I, when, I, when you start looking at all the things I've done over the last 18 years, it's pretty freaking spectacular. There's one of your Super Bowl partners right there, Clarence hey! Joseph. Hey, guys. Mom and Papa. Um, and, and perfect example, we went to the uh, Super Bowl. Perfect example. And perfect timing right there. Perfect timing. And we show up at the Super Bowl, do a barbecue contest, and come in and reserve grand championship uh, for the Traeger team. I mean, like, I have done so much cool shit over the years. Uh, because of barbecue. And I am so, so, so thankful for each and every one of them. 
Uh, but yeah, nothing compares to the kids being proud of you. Seriously, when your kids turn you like, you know, this is cool as shit, mom, or, you know, hey, mom, you know, don't embarrass me because your friends are too weird, you know? <laughs> like, it's, you have too many friends, mom. You, or, or my kids say to me, I'm not allowed to comment publicly on their Instagram or their Facebook because they don't want uh, people, uh, you know, stalking me. It's so weird. Yeah, it, it is awesome. Well, you got a lot of people in here talking about your accomplishments right now, Wes. But have you <laughs> but have you cooked in a parking lot with 25 homeless mo- folks? Yes, I your have. <laughs> no joke. In Vegas, I actually have. Um, uh, you know, I, I think the other thing is, is, you know, people always thought, you know, Rob, you, you talk about the, the TV stuff. Um, I've turned down the last eight programs from the Food Network. That's something new. Um, the last uh, three years, I've turned down eight programs. And... Uh, don't like what I'm getting offered. I don't like the shows. Simon, and, what's that uh, saying? Hey, Simon. Um, and so one of the things is, is that I'm in a position now where I can turn down Food Network. Um, the reason is because if I don't like it, I don't do it. Happiness above all. You know what? She turned down the Food Network, but she did not turn down the So Smoking Gooder show. And I appreciate <laughs> Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Definitely. You know, of all the stuff you've done, I'm sure this rates pretty well up there. Probably right under where your kid's being proud of you. And I appreciate it. But let's talk. Think about what we. There we go. There's some clapping going on. Uh, Think about, uh, you know, where you started, you know, when you were in HR and you were judging a barbecue contest uh, and just kind of starting out. What would you what would what would that lady, Danielle, think about what DVQ is now, 18 years later? Because that's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing what you're doing, girl. I think she would say she's amazing. I think she would say I'm much better at barbecue than relationships <laughs> and marriage. <laughs> Do we want to talk about that? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, no, that's we another, don't. That's, that's another show. <laughs> that's a whole other show. Um, <laughs> that's another show. Um, I think that, that overall, you got to be proud of yourself and you're proud of your own accomplishments. Uh, thanks, Wes, for the kind comments, by the way. Um, you know, one of the things is, is that I... I think that I'm a good representation of barbecue. I I think that people can be kind and have integrity and not (laughs) screw people over and and, and still be successful on their own terms. You are amazing. And and I've been with you at the Houston (laughs) livestock show area walking around uh, with Danielle is, is quite amazing. You know, she, (laughs) we can't go uh, literally 10 feet and people are just like coming. I was like, all right, I'm going to leave y'all here and I'll be back. (laughs) And I'll come back to you guys because uh, yeah, you, that, that did happen. <laughs> you and Diane were like, yeah, I was like, okay, all right, I'll be over here. And when y'all finally make it to me, uh, which would probably be in about 45 to an hour and I'm only 30 feet away from you. Uh, it's, 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 it's amazing and it's great, but you are so kind and you're so nice to everybody that comes up to you. It, and, and like I mentioned earlier, you're, you're a great ambassador for this sport and people have seen you on television. They've seen you, uh, people that started in, you know, I, I loved your, uh, barbecue pit master show and they still air all the damn time. Oh my God. Yes. Yes, they do. <laughs> and it's so funny. Cause I can always tell, I can always tell that they just re-aired it because it always happens in airports, but I'm always getting stopped in airports. Right. And, and sometimes I wear this hat or sometimes I wear the Buffalo bills one when I'm at airports. If I'm, if I'm really tired and I don't want to talk to people, I usually just wear the Buffalo Bills one because then people are less likely to recognize me. But then people still recognize me now, which is weird. And I can always tell when they're like re-airing like Barbecue Crawl or Pitmasters or Destination Americas, you know, whatever, the Food Network's, you know, Barbecue Challenges or whatever. Because all of a sudden somebody like whip around and, you know, I've had like the weirdest, weirdest, weirdest interactions with some fans. And like not appropriate. Like I'm in the bathroom washing my hands. Like don't, don't, don't approach me this. It's just gross. Okay. Um, you know, or that is or, weird. Or, That's or, like or, off or, limits at that point. It's, you know, I was at Sam's Club once, and this lady from like two aisles over, and I was in there, and I was just here. I think I was picking up a rack of ribs or something. Just something simple, right? She goes, "For real, for real, is that you?" And she just started <laughs> yelling at me, and I must have been about twenty shades of red. What's up, James? And I was like just mortified, um, just because I was embarrassed. But you know, it's just kind of weird, you know. Um. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I'm getting some messages here. Uh, Pitmasters is where I decided to, I wanted to start barbecue con. A lot of people, I, I'm one. I started watching that. I remember seeing you and Ernest Cervantes and all of you guys in the early on uh, seasons of, of Pitmasters, and uh, that was really inspiring. And uh, you've inspired that right there has it has spawned a lot of the. Now I feel like we're older, or we're the older guys that uh, <laughs> have been doing this for 10, 11 years. You know, not eight, nine, ten, eleven years. 
or whatnot. But um, yeah, those still air, and I and I love, <laughs> I still love uh, seeing seeing you on those things. You're 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 a pretty demanding lady back in the day, and probably still I'm are still even demanding. probably I'm more so at this point. I, no, I think I think one of the things is that you stay demanding, but I just know what I want. <laughs> And, and, and there is a real good reason why I've lasted 18 years in this industry is that I have balanced the need to GSD, which is get shit done, with uh, a compassionate, kind heart um, that understands that I am grateful and humbled and thankful for every single person that I've had interactions with. Um, and, I, and I'm really, truly grateful for those interactions and, and grateful for people following me and grateful for their support and love and incredibly kind messages and whatnot. Um, but don't kid yourself. I know what I want and I'm going to get there and I'm going to do it and don't get in my way. Awesome. <laughs> well, uh, we're, we're going to hear Danielle's uh, Mount Rushmore and her barbecue homie here in just a minute. We're going to, if you guys didn't catch, I'm going to let Danielle take a quick break and then I won't keep you much longer after this break. Uh, but we're going to play, uh, if y'all didn't catch Louis Gonzalez's uh, Truth Masters, Pit master with truth. We're gonna. Did you like that, Daniel? It was. I loved it. I think that's an awesome thing to do. It is pretty awesome. That's a shout yeah. out to Mark and Roy with the uh, chicken bark. Love they it. call it chicken bark. And uh, so I we've got it. a few videos out there now. But this is the latest one. And Louis just grand. Louis Gonzalez. Shout out to Louis Gonzalez. He yeah. uh, has been at it for a long time. He's had seven reserve grand champions, and we were always, you know, calling him, you know, the always the bridesmaid, never the bride. He finally. Last weekend at a big NASCAR competition to where NASCAR yeah, on Sunday yeah, got to interview Coda. him. He, he, yeah, Coda, yeah, in Austin. And he he finally he finally got off the schneid. He got his first grand championship. You know, he's been at it hard at it, you know, competing and doing yeah. at it. So uh shout out to Louie. But we're gonna play his truth masters and then uh we'll bring Danielle back on here in just a moment. We'll, we'll and then we'll uh we'll let her get out of here because we we kept her an hour. And, uh, and I appreciate you, Danielle. Thank you so much. But uh, no we'll take a break for you. You can go uh, do whatever you need to do. You get about a four-minute break, and then we'll bring you right back on. All right. I'm going to take Danielle down. Ty, real quick. I know you have some questions. If you have any more questions for Danielle, drop them in the comments. I saw a good one from Wes, and we will ask that question um, to her. And uh, we'll see how, how you know how long we can uh, keep her here, but uh, if you've got some questions, put them on there and uh, we'll get her on here. We'll get them to her. All right. Okay. You gotcha. good? You good, Ty? Yeah. All right. Let's, yeah, play, uh, let's play the Truth Masters and then uh, we'll come back after that one. All right. All right, we're back with uh, another edition of Truth Masters with Texas Pit Masters. And today we've got with us... Uh, Louis Gonzalez with DD Barbecue. And where are you guys out of? San Antonio, Texas. Hey man, good luck this weekend. Thank you. All right, first up, what is your guilty pleasure? My name's DD for a reason. I like double Ds. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We want to be sponsored by double Ds. Okay, uh, celebrity crush? Emma Stone or... Kate Upton, one of the two. Dang, Kate Upton in that old video, like yes. the classic. Yeah. Oh, wow, that was good. All right, where's barbecue injury? I think burning my leg on my uh, charcoal basket. Uh, pretty bad? Yeah, it was pretty bad. No no doctor visit? or. No, hell no. Fuck the doctors. Weirdest thing you've ever eaten? I think uh, bull balls. These nuts. They were good, but until I knew what they were, then I was like, oh, it's kind of fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it is very fucked up. What is one of your cooking pet peeves? I gotta be good on timing. I hate being late or rushed. Messier person, you or a significant other? Uh, definitely me, there is no significant other. I could buy myself flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miley, for his anthem. All right, um, favorite cereal? Um, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Excellent. Uh, okay, what is something that you know that others wouldn't think you would know? Snapple facts. I read a lot of them, but I can't share anyone with you. I just forget all of them. I don't, and, and furthermore, I don't think anybody else drinks an apple. All right, uh, next up, uh, hit me with the first movie quote that comes to your mind. They, they cut me off from eating all sorts of foods that shape like dicks. <laughs> you know which foods are shaped like dicks? The best kinds. <laughs> I don't know, it's really messed up. Super gay. No more eggplant for him tonight. Okay, <laughs> rapid fire round, ready? Okay. Uh, G.I. Joe or He-Man? G.I. Joe. Mountains or beach? Uh, beach. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Noise or silence? Silence. 
Your ex-girlfriend or the girl before that? Oh, goddamn. Um, the shit. The, the ex-girlfriend. <laughs> okay, Chevy or Ford? Chevy. Superman or Batman? Superman. Tortillas or bread? Tortillas. Menudo or tortilla soup? Tortilla soup. Fuck menudo. Salty or sweet? Sweet. Samsung or iPhone? Uh, let's get rid of those green bubbles, man. iPhone all the way. <laughs> Pepsi or Coke? Uh, Pepsi. McDonald's or Wendy's? Let's go with Wendy's. Wendy's? Yeah, Wendy's. All right. All right. Yeah. Kelly Kapowski from Saved by the Bell or Pamela Anderson? I'll go with Kelly Kapowski. <laughs> all right. Thanks for playing, brother. <laughs> There they are. Shout out to Mark Suarez and Roy Austin with Chicken Bark for providing that wonderful video. That that was like our seventh video, I believe. You know, I don't remember all of who has all been on them, but they've all been pretty great. And uh, that one falls right in line with uh, what we've already seen uh, with Chicken Bark. Uh, if you guys are not following Chicken Bark, look them up on Facebook. It's uh, C H I C K N. Bark because you know you always want to put a bark on your chicken. Uh, apparently, that's where they go, that's what they're going for. Uh, yeah, uh, when they asked about uh, <clears throat> ex girlfriend versus the one before that, he's like, uh, yeah, so there you go. Apparently, we've got some Australian international Australian teams watching tonight. Shout out to Brianna with uh, Smoking Magic for putting putting that into my ear. Because if you're watching from Australia, put yourself in the comments. I saw, I saw Nico Russ, uh, he's been watching this show. Uh, before, but let's bring uh, Danielle back in here. Um, oh, that's my fault. That was my fault, Ty. You know, I forget. You know, sometimes I forget. I got my boy on it, and he's always on it. Producer <laughs> Ty is in the house. Uh, hey, Ty. But Ty, I know you have a great question for Danielle. You got to come on here, Ty. More of Ty is what we need on this show. Uh, more Ty. More Ty. Come on, Ty. Yeah. More so cowboy, then, then, then yeah, cowboy. I was, I was trying to say there a little bit before the show, I, I loved hearing your story. It, it was great. So I was trying to watch some of the, the, uh, shows today. So not only are they cool just with the content itself, but I like the way it's produced. So I, I assume that you being with the, the small road crew, you produce everything. So I, I get the bigger picture you're talking about. My wife is a, uh, HR professional for 25 plus years, PHR and, you know, yeah. been, been in the Sherm. So much respect to you. Uh, like I, I recognize the game you got that that's, that's badass. I appreciate you. So, yeah. I mean, like what, what's it like with your sets and everything? What's, so, is that what, grill behind you? Is that the one that you bought three days after the, no, 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 not. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> that was a I, I thought that was a cool story. Three days after <laughs> yes, you judged yes. the first meet, you I went did. and bought a, that's Too, pretty actually, cool. The, the three days after I judged a barbecue contest, I bought two grills, uh, got two, got two grills. Uh, one was a uh, Traeger Little Tex, and the other one was a Weber Smoky Mountain 18.5 inch, uh, which I still think is better than the 22 inch because the air distribution is so much better on the 18 and a half. Um, so one of the things for me is the like, army you know, person to me loves that you talk about the specifications because I was always adamant that all my soldiers say, knew what the nomenclature was, what yeah. its you know what its uh, specs were. So props People to you for that too. Well, people also need to understand that the metal has changed over the last 18 years in a big way. Um, there was a millimeter change a couple of years ago and made a massive impact on a millimeter, made a massive impact on airflow and also heat retention on a lot of the Weber products. Um, obviously, I don't use them anymore. But, uh, you know, the thing is, is that you need to understand airflow. You need to understand how oxygen actually impacts fire and how drafts work and and there is so many other things that you need to understand, you know, if you're going to go out and be a professional barbecue and call yourself a barbecue expert, and, you know, it's, uh, it's just, you know, part of the, part of the deal. You should know that you should know how fire actually is created. Um, but nonetheless, no, at home here, you know, I, uh, I, did a, I did a lot of, <laughs> I did a lot of videos. And uh, when I went back on the road, I just don't have time anymore. It was really simple here in the backyard. I ran a two camera system, uh, one overhead camera, one one down further, um, created an entire like kind of outdoor studio. And now I just don't have time. And and the other thing is, is that um, I could work another 60, 70 hours a week. I don't want to. I love my life the way it is. And I like what I do. And I share real food to real people. I think the other thing is that I don't cook for Instagram. That's some bullshit. 
you know, these guys that are coming online and they're going, oh, look at my one piece of meat. I squeeze it. Kiss my grits. Like, seriously. Kiss my grits. Kiss my grits. I mean, you know, it's a whole different world when you're cooking live. And I think that's another thing, Ty, that during COVID, I think people really respected the fact I cook live. There wasn't me editing, you know, the perfect shot. There wasn't me editing, you know, a, um, you know, a, a perfect slice. No, I had cooked live. And I did that for a couple of years online to show people, no, if you actually have a skill set and you're not just editing it for Instagram purity or perfection or, you know, editing it for some TikTok bullshit. Um, no, I'm a real pit master. I, I'm not, I don't cook for Instagram. No, but uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. There, there it was. <laughs> Ty, video. <laughs> Ty bringing out the uh, feistiness out of Danielle because... Uh, Rob, it drives me bonkers. It does. That that whole bull crap. Um, and I'll, the other thing that drives me bonkers is the food weight that people go through. Like it mm. is ridiculous because they want to get a perfect shot for Instagram or they want to get a perfect shot for TikTok. And meanwhile, we've got so many people that are just struggling to get groceries these days. Um, that all that kind of stuff, it drives me clearly. Clearly, it can, gets can, can we talk about what dri what drives me bonkers is yes, the uh, the Instagram accounts that have like thousands of people and they don't cook they just take pictures of food other people's food yeah. that drives me that that uh, really grinds my gears well and, the yeah. other thing is that they uh the fact is that there are going to always be some people that are actually talented and actually can cook and then there's also going to <laughs> Sorry, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, shout out to bill hey bill I'm a big fan of his, his stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the things is, is that, you know, some of us can actually, oh my God, that's perfect. That big Bill, perfect. big Bill's in the house. Um, you know, one of the things is, is some of us can actually really cook, not just some BS Instagram crap, you know. No, Bill's obviously a talented pit master. Bill is very Nobody's, but he's, he's also got a good sense of humor. So God bless Bill. Bill's great. Bill's great. But yep. he does. And he talks about it. I asked him, I was like, was that yep. filtered? He, I was like, was that, was that picture filtered? And he's like, bro, all my shit's filtered, bro. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, fair enough. I'll post something. And people are like filtered, like, well, okay. Fuck y'all. But you know, <laughs> but it was like, I'd ask Bill one time, was that, was that filter bill? Cause that looked amazing. He's like, bro, all my shit's filtered. <laughs> I was nah. like, cool. I'm not, I'm not much on the filtering. And the only thing I usually sometimes do because my lighting is kind of sucky back here uh, is I'll introduce more light. Uh, other than that, my food is my food. And, you know, I take videos in my really poorly lit kitchen and, and show people like even yesterday I did uh, usually up in stories. I have a lot of stuff in Instagram stories more than posts. So I did like a garlic stuffed uh, gorgeous picanha. God, this is such a beautiful piece of meat yesterday. And, you know, I, I sliced it up real and threw the, the, the live feed up there. And I went, all right, this is it. Real food. Fucking Wes Garrett. Bill is actually a 23 year old black man. He's filtered. Oh, <laughs> Come on, Wes. Oh, my goodness. Louis Gonzalez, late to the party. Well, party. Well, you just missed uh, me giving you some shout outs. And I don't know if you saw your. <laughs> Congratulations, did, Louis. Did you see your chicken bark video, Louis? Because it was it's pretty good. Funny. Pretty entertaining, it's, it's funny. my man. It's, it's funny as hell. Yeah. So, uh, last thing I wanted to ask you you got a cookbook maybe on the horizon? You already got one out there. You're amazing, Danielle. You, you, you're all of these things, and you're also an author, which yeah. is pretty awesome. So books are not that lucrative, <laughs> so that's why I keep putting it off. <laughs> that's why I don't do a book. That's exactly why I don't do a book. I mean, it's like there's no money in it. I mean, why take all there's the time? Money. There's money in it, but not as much as I'd like there to be, and I can do other things that make more money. Um, but nonetheless, no, actually, uh, the first book is a bestseller. Uh, we've gone to printing, I think, seven or eight times now, which is pretty damn amazing for a first-timer. Uh, it was nominated for a Best Cookbook in the World Award by Gourmand, which is pretty spectacular. I was pretty Damn. stoked about that. Um, but it's been seven years. And, you know, Random House, which is the largest publisher in the world, which I'm very grateful for, uh, one of the things is, is that, you know, they've asked me every year, can, can, can you do it now? Can you do it now? Can you do another one? Can you do another one? What's up, Reyes? <laughs> and, and, and that's great. And, and I'd love to. But books take a real dedication of time. So let me let, me let everybody in on a little secret here. If you go to your cookbooks and you go to like some big celebrity, you know, not like Z-List like I am, but like big celebrity, like Food Network on there all the time. And a lot of times you'll see like a name at the top, right? And you'll see the celebrity's name and you'll say, with additions by. Well, that means that that secondary person is the ghostwriter that has written probably the majority of the recipes. And that celebrity person has probably only contributed 10 to 20%. Books take 
an insane amount of time to write real recipes. Uh, real recipes that actually work, not some BS, you know, pulled from the internet AI kind of crap, which is actually something that's happening right now. Um, so one of the things is, is that I have been writing the next book for the last four years. Um, and I've got just over, I don't know, four to 500 recipes. Um, and they're going to get called down to 365. And uh, that's, that's a big ass book. book. Yeah, it's actually the equivalent of three books. Most books are 100 recipes. Um, but anybody that's been on my Instagram or been on my Facebook knows that I post recipes, real recipes all the time. This is nothing new. I post real recipes for real people that actually want to cook some stuff in their backyard, not just competition stuff, not just, you know, grilling stuff, not just barbecue. I do it all, whether it's, you know, uh, fusions, Asian fusion is a big thing for me. Um, anything from baking and smoking and preserving and all the things, um, rubs and sauces, because, you know, not everybody should just crack open a lid of a rub. And we have some spectacular rubs. Uh, I noticed the barbecue stores up there, you know, I've shopped and have said quite a few times there, you know, um, shout, out to great, Dustin. <laughs> shout out to their store. He's going to clip that and uh, post it now. <laughs> <laughs> they got a great assortment of rubs. Which, I wouldn't, which is, well, I wouldn't doubt them. I mean, or blame them. Go for it. Clip um, it, Dustin. Let's but, go. But, you know, I think also a sign of a real pet master is that I can be handed a whole bunch of Fiesta spices and make my own rubs and make my own sauces from scratch uh, without, a, without a recipe book or without somebody telling me what to do. So I think that that's a good indication of a, a pet master skill too. So I want to include lots of real recipes for real people. And so the next book is coming. It's probably going to be two more years, but it is coming. That's awesome. And I know you can do real recipes because during COVID, you killed it, girl. I mean, you were like twice a day going live. And like you mentioned, you know, hey, I'm not filming this or I'm not editing. And it was live action during COVID when everybody was, you know, at home, you know, doing nothing. You were uh, and you're in that room where you are right now, just yeah. killing it. Just killing it. Which, What's that? Just here in my backyard. What do you, what do you uh, think back on that time? Was that, uh, that, that well, had was, to be, you put I yourself was, in front of the camera over everybody at that moment, and which was awesome. Well, I think it was a sanity saver for me, honestly. Um, I had not, not traveled. <laughs> I'm used to traveling. You know, one of the things is, is that I get kind of antsy. Uh, I'm home for more than like two, three weeks. I'm like, okay, I got to go. I got to go somewhere. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. <laughs> um, I like traveling. I like seeing new things. I also um, have so many friends worldwide, especially in Texas. I have so many friends in Texas. It's ridiculous. I literally landed in San Antonio, and there was 22 messages on my phone going, how long are you here for? How long are you here for? Are you going to be here? Can you come over here? Can you come to Austin? Can you come to Houston? Can you come here? Can, how long are you going to be there? And I'm like, glad I'm like, guys, I'm here for 36 hours. I'm not seeing anybody. So um, it's, a bay that's kind of, it's, it's a kind of the thing, you know? Like, so I think uh, cooking live for people is, um a sanity saver for me it really was because i needed to do something i love doing it and it was fun lacy's in the house we call her hey, fire, fire fireball lacy I, I love that you're bringing and again we talked about it you are a and you're an inspiration to me i'd love to be doing what you're doing so it's not just no. women looking up to you i'm looking up to you right now but no. i hope you're bringing the women out here grant pinkerton the, hey, I don't know I just, know. it's funny i do know grant i actually just went uh that was the only thing grant just to let you know i give you a total compliment here um, the only thing I made time for was I drove into San Antonio and I ate at Pinkerton's. There it is. It. Right I, there. I did that. I did. I went to H-E-B and I went to Pinkerton's. Had a lovely, lovely meal there. Um, it was, what a beautiful restaurant in San Antonio. I mean, that's it's so pretty. Uh, the it is. sucked so bad around there. But <laughs> other than that, it was great. Um, Fix your parking. Yeah, I, <laughs> oh, it's not his fault. But, you know, it's a beautiful building. It's a beautiful um there's a, such lovely staff in there too you know they spotted me right away which is funny and they're like can we take you for a tour of the pits and i'm like yeah so they i saw, I saw their oilers and saw their you know got to see their their offsets too which is cool um had a really good meal um enjoyed it immensely um so one of the things is you know i think that that's even after 18 years i still don't get bored of eating barbecue as well which is another thing doesn't Especially matter where great I barbecue have. Well, I've, I've, I've now had barbecue in 49 out of 50 states. I've got the last state coming up next year. I'm, I've got a trip planned for two weeks to Hawaii next year. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so I've got, I'm going to four islands next year. That's already planned. That'll be my last state. That means I've eaten, I've eaten barbecue in all 50 states at that point. Um, and overall, over 650 barbecue joints now I've eaten barbecue. Oh, my goodness. 
Yeah, You've done the line. crawl. Um, yeah. Who was it? I just saw Serge, our follow team. He was our guest last week. Are those mm-hmm. COVID videos still out there anywhere? I mean, do they yeah, just... they're on. They're on Facebook. Uh, if you go to Diva Q on Facebook, uh, my fa- Facebook fan page. Um, if you just go on your videos, you just keep scrolling back. There are so many videos out there. Like, oh my gosh. Or, or here's the thing. If you ever want to know how I do something, all you do is you go to Google because I do it all the time because I can't remember my own damn. But have I done this? I'm pretty sure I've done this. Um, I'll go to Google and I'll say like, you know, DivaQ pineapple or DivaQ barbecue sauce or DivaQ barbecue rub or DivaQ ham, DivaQ, you know, world championship pork butt, DivaQ, you know, whatever. And that's literally, they'll, they'll bring up all the COVID videos as well. Awesome. Did you have a team name before DivaQ or is that always DivaQ? No, it's always been DivaQ. Yeah. Um, the reason I, I chose DivaQ is because I always had my makeup done. I never not have my makeup done. <laughs> um, I always have my nails done. There it is right there. Um, uh, Producer ties on it. L- L- That's L- how you do it, Wes. <laughs> <laughs> That's, there there he is. You got it. Um, and so Diva, I, it, didn't, uh, it just meant that I was, I was really strong. I knew what I wanted. I was going to go after it. And so that's, that's literally where Diva Q came from. Awesome. That is that, that. And it's legally trademarked in the USPTO. Um, you know, I, I've got both the, the flame, my name, and plus life is too short for bad barbecue. Also trademarked. It's been trademarked for many, many years. That's a classic one. That is a classic Uh one that you, uh, you've been saying that for a number of years. All right. We got some starred, comments uh you're gonna be at meat stock sydney you're not gonna be there no. you just got no. back i actually so instead of uh, i wish i could be at meat stock sydney um however i am already booked i'm actually doing i'm going to teach classes in atlanta i'll be in the atlanta area for a couple of weeks i've got some retail activations there in the atlanta area and i will also be a vip at a braves uh, game as well oh, awesome. in Atlanta, and and i'm doing some barbecue there with traeger grills are you going to hook up with your uh, fellow Canadian and barbecue pit master, Tony Tenace? Uh No. <laughs> That's a smart answer. Good no. answer. Yes, he is my friend by far. Tony and I have been friends for many, many years, but no. <laughs> it's probably a, probably, no, I am not. probably a good thing there. Um, Jermaine Cruz, I got to cook with Danielle years ago in a hotel parking lot in Poncha <laughs> City, Oklahoma. The guys with the big ass crane work at a, a chemical plant. Um, we mentioned Sarah. She's a female butcher. That's awesome. Wes Garrett has a question. Uh, what is something crazy that happened on any of your shows that you can speak about now? Me wanting to deck another pit master. Oh, which pit master? I'll let you guys not know that, but I will tell you right <laughs> now there, um, there was a moment on one of the shows was this the that one that was I talking thought, smack to you? No, no, no. That one, I'm good with that. And that's okay. Sterling Ball. Sterling Ball and I are still friends to this day. Um, this was a one-off that we had filmed for Food Network. And the pitmaster was such a moron. And he has gotten by on his looks and his personality, not on his skill set. And he turned around and he said something to me. And I've never wanted to clock somebody so bad in my life. And uh, I don't know that happened. Um and It'd be a lot all, cooler all if I, you did. <laughs> all, I, all I kept thinking was, you can't go to jail. 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 And literally, that was playing in my head. Um, and also, you got a green card. You got a green card. Don't get to jail. <laughs> and so that was literally um, something. Um, uh, other things that happened on the show, I, I'll tell you. There's a, so in Food Network, um, I did Food Network Chopped a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, they've asked me three times since then. And I said no. Uh, and the reason is, is that I had to sit there with the guy who had forgotten two ingredients um, and listen to them retape portions of it. And not talking about uh, meat church. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> no, definitely People not are just gonna, They're church. just going to throw out names now. No, <laughs> just definitely gonna... not talking about meat church. Um, one of the things for me is that, uh, you know, I had to listen to them on Food Network Chopped retape sections. So... It sounded like I didn't cook a pork chop right, and I, it was total bullshit. And I got angry. And you can actually see me slam a door on Food Network's Chopped um, because the person that won, I actually got to hear them say these words. And I got a little bitter. No, I'm actually a lot bitter. Who am I kidding? That's a lot bitter. Said we can't let a Canadian woman win. Oh. Yeah, and I heard that out of a producer's uh, uh, mouth. 
And I'm like, that's some bullshit. And so they let the boy from Boston win. He had forgotten two ingredients and I got angry. And I, I said to myself, I will never do another reality show like that again. Cause I didn't get a fair shot and I got screwed over from a championship. So. Well, I know we know re- those, I don't know. Everybody knows, but those reality shows are uh, scripted. Bullshit. Well, there's a, you know, there's another reason I think, you know, Rob, you alluded to it earlier and, and I know we're going over time here, but you talked about the early days of pitmasters. Well, I don't think people understand that the early days of pitmasters on TLC, they were done under what's called game show rules. So game show rules and, and, and reality show drama basically is totally different. So a game show has to be adhered to legal, like legally, okay, an opportunity where each contestant is given an equal opportunity to win and presented with the information. There's a lawyer on site and there's legal counsel available to you. Um, after TLC, the original Pitmasters, they changed and then they went to um, game show uh, rules got kicked out and then they went to the reality side, which means that in the essence, basically, a producer can determine the outcome of that show, which means, as you just said, they can script whoever the hell they want to win. And so it doesn't yeah. matter your skill set. It doesn't matter if you are a badass pit master. It doesn't matter if you know your shit inside and out. It does not matter. They are going to pick whatever drama related bull crap winner that they want, um, whether it's relevant or not. And, and I don't have a lot of uh, definitely, I don't really think I have a lot of uh, hope that that's going to change anytime soon. I think that they should bring it back to the game show rules where everybody has an equal opportunity and the judging is blind because it's such bullshit that they give it to these people that can't cook, you know, their ass out of a box. Ernest Cervantes, uh, I I feel, and he feels too. I mean, I'm not gonna put words in his mouth, but that boy got robbed. Uh, and no it was shit. just it was all scripted. But and, and Ernest and Ernest knows exactly the day I got robbed too because I couldn't say anything. And funny enough, the day that this Food Network uh, Grilled Championships uh, uh, came out, Ernest was one of the first people that said our girl got robbed, and that's some bullshit. And and you know the truly thing is, he was right, and I couldn't say a damn thing. Yep, Danielle is truly a boss lady. Yes, she is the yeah. boss lady, not a boss lady. The boss lady is what he posted there. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> you know, uh, the ones that I liked the best of the pitmaster shows were the ones where they followed somebody during a contest to where they're yeah. judged at the at the event. Those were the best yeah. ones, and uh, those were the most fun because you know, it you got and that's what inspired me to go cook a contest is the ones that were actually. They had a pop-up tent back in the day. Yep. I was like, well, I got a pop-up tent. I'm a tailgater. I got one of those, I and mean, we can get a grill. Let's go. And um, that's what got me off the couch and to start doing barbecue was those shows originally where they were at a contest. And, you know, you don't – they win some, they lose some. It's just like, you know, w- we experience every every weekend. And so, you know, that's that. those were the most – funds uh for there yeah flip them stones this is good shit uh we i mean she, she just said she just turned down eight shows that come at yeah. her not this one but eight uh, uh food, food network, network shows yeah, yeah. Eight food network shows and it's not because i haven't been asked you know somebody's like why haven't you gone back on tv it's been a couple years not because i haven't been asked because i'm choosing happiness over bullshit is what i'm choosing okay i'm choosing to live my life and my barbecue life in, in a happy place that, that's not going to have, you know, have, have to prove my worth to anybody. I don't need to prove shit to anybody anymore. Okay. I've been doing this long enough and I've worked hard enough. And I think that that's really important to note that, that you, if you know your stuff inside and out, you don't need to go back on there and prove it time and time again. Um, the reality is that there are people like me who've got lots of integrity, who want to cook and help people genuinely along and bring their barbecue people together. Um, the best part about barbecue is bringing people together. I think one of the worst things that's ever happened to barbecue competitions is allowing RVs to come in. Dead serious. Why? Because I will tell you, Rob, that there used to be RVs and big trailers. No offense, because I, I own one. Okay, so understand. <laughs> but when I first started, You're so bad for barbecue, yeah, Danielle. I know. But when I first started, one of the best things was is that everybody Thanks, showed Wes. up on a trailer and they showed up with um, a pop-up tent. You know what I mean? Yeah. And one of the great things about that we all talked to each other. We sat around. We cherished each other's uh, time and, and we looked forward to it. Now, you know, a turning goes in and everybody disappears into their, you know, fancy ass RVs or their expensive ass trailers. And what happened was that some of that uh, beautiful, incredible, you know, uh, barbecue community got lost because of that. And so now people are just a little too segregated. 
Um, yeah, I, I liked the contest where you didn't have the trailers. I really did. As much as it's a pain in the ass to go back to 10 team and, and 10 by 10, there was something really special in that time where people would show up and you would literally um, get more of a community um, than just people disappearing for the night in their, their trailers. Yeah, now now those people that are in the uh, tents now they're called pop up warriors because uh, they're in the <laughs> elements and they those are the true barbecues. I and mean, when you get right down to it, because you know <laughs> we just came back from Alvin and it had a deluge of just water coming through there and uh, and then and after the water leaves you're stuck with just mud and so oh, shout well, out to I'm, the pop up warriors. And just a shout out to Lacey. I'm gonna give you a true story. I was up in Alaska last year on a cruise, ran into barbecues. How's that for funny as hell? Ran into Lacey in Alaska, of all places. Oh, you um, know Lacey. <laughs> I, I literally ran it. No joke. I was, I was on a cruise up to Alaska, and I think we ended up drinking for the whole day. <laughs> she's she's awesome. She's awesome. She's getting a uh, a fun uh, title of Fireball Lacey because uh, the Fireball comes out with her, and no, uh, she's you. a hoot. She's a hoot. We do love Lacey and the uh, damn Yankees barbecue uh, team up there. Her husband. Uh, yeah. They're they're amazing. They're doing great out there as well. Uh, they're smoking magic. We love Fireball Lacey. Everybody, who doesn't? Uh, what did Nick uh, put Nick's comment up there? That's a, Nine years ago, I was watching Diva Q chicken lollipop video at my first comp, having never cooked chicken before and nailed fifth of 40 teams. Then took three firsts with it, so I blame her for my addiction. Well, thanks, Nick. So the yeah. year that that video came out, I was 11th in the nation in chicken. I tied for 10th and it dropped down to 11th with KCBS. And I was at a 6,000 team, so it didn't suck. Nope, did not suck. Yeah, like you mentioned earlier, you got nothing to prove anymore as far as competition. I love, like I mentioned, I'm, I'm, you know, envious and jealous, and uh, it's something to strive for what you do. But you just met, you know, like you said earlier, you know, people say it must be nice. Yeah, whatever. You worked your ass off to get there. Yeah, and you know, I, it's, it's not. I won't say never, never. You never know. Maybe I'll show up at a contest. Maybe I'll just, you know, feel the edge to do it again. But right now, no. I, I, I feel the edge to book another, you know, three or four cruises and to uh, travel to Thailand or travel to, you know, like later on, uh, I think I'm going back to Scotland. I'm going, so, so far this year, I'm going to England, Scotland, Ireland, France, um, Haiti. Uh, and to cook or nine, just like, to travel both, or, or cook? Okay. Both, both and nine other Caribbean countries. So, yeah. Awesome. That is awesome. All right. Let's yeah. talk about, uh, you're, uh, I don't want to keep you too late. I know it's 1030 on the East Coast where you are. And Thank so you for pointing that out, Rob. <laughs> I know. Well, you did it to me. It was like, you know, you should really put what time zone you are. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You're, you know, you're you're right. I should do that. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, let's talk about your uh, Mount Rushmore barbecue. Like I mentioned earlier, these people that have inspired you or helped you or whatever it is. Are there four people? Do you have four people that you want to put on this mountain of DVQ? Um, I will tell you that the first person I would put on that mountain um would be a lady by the name of karen putnam uh from flower of the flames let me explain why when i first started there used to be a really uh big barbecue forum online uh where i got trashed mercilessly told me that i didn't belong i was just a fat fucking canadian literally got called back to my face God. on the forum uh that didn't Stuck belong. With you. go back go yeah really go, <laughs> go back to canada i got told a whole bunch of things off however there's a woman on there who I emailed and asked some questions of, and, and she's now passed on. Her family, actually, funny enough, um, her family, when she passed on, contacted me and said, we have something for you from Karen. And Karen wrote a cookbook many years ago called Barbecue Championship, Barbecue Championship Secrets. It's a great cookbook, by the way. Horribly published, like horrible. Like there's no pictures in it, but the recipes are solid. Um, and they came to a contest and brought, it's her sister actually came to me and said, my sister asked that I bring this to you when she passed on. It was one of her competition knives. Wow. Um, so I'd say Karen, Karen would be going there first. What was her Got last my, name? Putnam. Putnam. Karen Put Putnam. Putnam, Flower of the Flames. Um, the second person I would put on there would be John Meller when he was sober. Uh, he's now passed on, uh, but mm -hmm. John Meller, definitely. He taught me more about brisket than anybody originally. I, I will tell you, uh, him and his sister, who was also passed on, Leanne, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, two Crazy. of my dear friends. Um, they, uh, but John specifically taught me a ridiculous amount of information about brisket and knowing when a brisket was done 
and knowing how to turn a brisket and knowing how oxygen would work and, and a whole bunch of things. Uh, what people don't realize is that for many years, the ribs that John served on the trailer were my recipe, which is kind of cool. Um, I would say the next person would be Jamie McDonald from Bear Smokehouse in uh, Connecticut. Jamie McDonald used to be a world championship eater. He was one of those competitive eaters. Uh, Jamie McDonald is so inspiring because he has overcome so many things to get to where he is now. They own multiple of barbecue restaurants. He gives back to his community through World Food Kitchen as well. Um, Jamie didn't inspire me for cooking. Jamie just inspired me personally. And, and the reason is, is that Jamie has never let any obstacle ever get in his way for anything in life. And so I think Jamie would be definitely there. Um, fourth person would be my mom, my mom, and she's now passed on too. So three out of four of my male restaurant are passed away, by the way. Uh, the last one is going to be my mom because she was the original OG badass. Uh, my mother was a tough as nails, overcame so much shit in her life. Um, uh, and my mom, yeah, so Sharon Bennett, um, that would be, that would be her, um, that would be, um, yeah, that'd be my Mount Rushmore, um, because those people inspired me to either keep going, and my mom, along would be, like, the legacy would be my grandma, too, of course, my grandma taught me how to cook more than anybody, so, well, what's that, you know, other That's... than that, you know, I, I think that, you know, I could go off the obvious people that have, you know, all the barbecue classes I took over the years, thankful for my partners, my clients, and things like that, and, of course, my children, above all, but those four people, when I think of people that have inspired me or kept me going over the years, definitely, um, if it wasn't for some people's encouragement, I, I know I would have, you know, thrown in the towel a couple times. All right. And then you can put one that almost made it on the mountain in the gift shop. You got one? Fuck, okay, that's going to sound really odd. But I will say this. My ex-husband, um, Brian uh, Harrison, um, a great... Uh, and I know people are going to be very shocked by this. But I'm shocked. Was, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, because at the end of the day, he really helped me out a lot. Um, and I'm thankful for it, um, no matter what. Um, you have to still be thankful for even the lessons that you're given in life. <laughs> and I think that that's an important one. Yeah. yeah. What, what was his but name he, again? Brian. Brian Harrison. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's truly... Um, e even though I think you can still be thankful for exes, <laughs> <laughs> Ex <-husbands. laughs> they can give you, they give you a lot of good lessons in life, <laughs> but no, he did, he did help quite a bit and I'm thankful for him, um, because there were, there were a lot of things that he did that were amazing. So I will be, I'll just say I'm thankful. That's a, that is a unique twist for the, uh, gift shop. Right. See? <laughs> I have said the gift shop portion of this is one of my favorite things because, uh, yeah. Generally, people put you know their top four, and then they, yeah. they get that one person. Hey, I almost put them up there, and and uh, oh, which yeah, which is inspiring to them, or is helpful for them as right. well. But you know, um, the gift shop portion is uh, <laughs> there. It is right there. Sarah Barker, Danielle, her daughter is killing. Hey, Sarah, how you doing, honey? <laughs> Ray Barker. Okay. Um. All right. So now, the other thing is barbecue homies. This is uh this is a segment that we uh have brought on as well. Uh, shout out to Jerry McCroy for the Mount Rushmore, but the barbecue homie is, is upset some people because you know, it's like, well, you're, I'm not your homie. I'm not, I'm not the one you want to be with. It's, you know, we say it in the barbecue, in the competition world, it's like somebody you want to like be set up next to, you know, you want to, you want to hang out all weekend. You want to get there on a Friday early and, and hang out oh. with this person through the whole contest. But you know, you're doing it in different aspects, you know, festivals or classes or whatnot. But is there somebody that you, Who's your barbecue homie, Danielle? Oh my God. No, I refuse. <laughs> That's, too many. That's some bullshit. You're just throwing up shit, Rob. That's what uh, we try to do here. Hey, you know, we stir um, up shit. You've been I'm stirring being... up shit tonight, which I love. It's awesome. It's not stirring up shit. It's just being real. And I think there you go. Thing, you know, Even thing. Um, barbecue homie. Oh my good gravy. There are so many amazing people out there, though. Like, how do you just pick one? You know, here's here's who I want my barbecue homie. I want to be set up next to Whistle Pig. There's my answer officially. I want to be set up next to Whistle Pig so I have access to the whiskey to take to all the homies. How about that? There's <laughs> my answer. Next, at the distil <laughs> distillery, that's where you want to be. I, <laughs> yeah, I respect yeah, that. There you go. There you go. There I respect that. Answer on that. I want to be set up next to next to, next to uh, Whistle Pig, and then I'm gonna go share all my whiskey with all my friends and my Traegers. There you go. <laughs> 
Well, all of my questions, and I believe the uh, Gooder Gang's questions have been answered. Uh, Sarah has a great comment. Just hashtag goals right there, DBQ. <laughs> That's and yeah, you are you are, you are an inspiration to a lot of people, and I'm and women especially, but not just women like me. I'm like I would love to be doing, and I know a lot of people that are watching right now. Your life is I know it's hard and it's hectic, yeah. and you're traveling, you're doing all of it, and it looks great on social media, uh, but. Uh, the fact that you're doing barbecue for a living is amazing. Yeah. And uh, people will love to do that for sure. Absolutely. You know, one of the things I will say is that don't compromise your values. Don't compromise your integrity. Um, I think too many people, there are too many grill whores out there, in all honesty. Um, and, and Rob, you know, grill and product whores out there. So I'll call yeah. a spade a spade. You know I will. And then they flip from company to company. I'm like, I would never trust those people in a million years to teach me anything about life or to buy anything from them because – they flip so fast. It's like, you know, working at McDonald's, you know, every 29 seconds, they got to flip a burger and they flip a company or they flip whatever. And I just look at it going, that's some bull crap. Okay. <laughs> like, um, one of the things is, is that I, I think that, you know, stick to your gun, stick to your integrity, um, pass on, pass on the check to keep your integrity. I've done that most of my life. Um, most of my career, I will say um, it could have been a lot more financially lucrative. However, I wouldn't have integrity and I'm not willing to give up my integrity for anybody. Or any There's company. Matt. There's Matt with Got Your Six. Yeah, that's that's some great uh, great advice. And and for sure, you know, you you just mentioned you passed on some checks to to stay oh, yeah. your course and to do what you're doing. And and people people, you know, it comes through the camera or whatever when you're talking, especially right now. I yeah. feel like, uh, and I appreciate uh, this back and forth because I feel like you've we're we're getting to see the real Danielle Bennett right now, which is awesome. Yeah. You know. Diva Q is, is, is awesome, but, uh, you know, you and I are friends and, and yeah. I love, uh, thank you for coming on the show. And it's great to, uh, you know, hear the true version of yourself. And I know that you, you do it everywhere, but, uh, yeah. it's, I think, feel like we're, uh, we've uncovered some stuff tonight. What's up? What's up, James Dodson? There you go, right there. James His Dodson. wife, Erica is a, is a, another badass yeah. lady cook. Ashley is in the comments. Sarah, I saw, Shout um, out to Ray. Shout out to Ray, of course. Yeah, and Sarah the Butcher. Both Sarahs are killing it out there. This is uh, this is awesome. And uh, of course, Jackie Milligan commented earlier. Um, Lacey is in the comments. It, it's great. And and, and Bree from Smoking Magic. So many people, and of course, all the guys that are that are watching still. Yeah. You know, we're we're inspired by you. And 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 a lot of these people have grown up in. I say grown up in the barbecue world, right? <laughs> We've grown yeah. up in the barbecue world because no one knows how to cook a damn brisket when you're born, right? You got to learn somewhere, and you've got to go through the trials you gotta you know experiment and do this and people like you like me i i told you i said 10 years ago i was in cypress ace hardware i was like diva q is gonna be here i was like really right here right on the corner i'm gonna go and uh you actually took some time you know with me we talked and i got a photo with you and i remember being outside with you you're like check this out and we were outside and you were grilling and your whole team was there it was pretty cool it was really cool mm -hmm. can't wait you know we're coming back to that in uh next month i'll be back at uh two ace hardware it's funny enough Ace Hardware again, you know, here we are 11 years later or whatever, um, up in Georgia. Yeah, next month, teaching two uh, Traeger shop classes back to back. So if anybody's in Georgia, I'm coming back to teach, which is great. How can they find out where you'll be? Because, you know, you're you're all over and uh, you just diva queue maybe? Yeah, you know, one of the great things is it's pretty easy to find me, okay? <laughs> it really is. Just, it, it's the same name all across every platform is diva queue, BBQ. And so whether it's on Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter. I'm on Twitter every day as well, uh, which is unusual. Um, I've got a good little, good little group of people that, that I talk to regularly on Twitter. Um, I have fans on TikTok. I don't know who you are. I don't go on TikTok very much. I post something every uh, couple months. I don't know why, um, but I'm not very often in in uh, in TikTok world. Uh, best place to get me is always usually Instagram, Instagram or Twitter. Yeah. There you go. Producer ties in there, putting your uh, putting your info <laughs> down Thanks, there. Guys. Erica uh, Ashley says more women in barbecue. Let's go. Erica is also saying let's go. I mean, it's it's really cool. It's really neat. Uh, Danielle, thank you so much for uh, taking an hour and forty minutes out of your, <laughs> out of your because, evening. Just because of your wife, Rob, and I love Diane, and you know this. <laughs> I know it. I know it, and uh, and I and I thank her, and she'll she'll be happy to hear that as well. But uh, all right, is uh before we let you go, I know you. We didn't even touch on some of the stuff, Duluth and, and all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all of, shout out! I got a shout out to my sponsor. Give give uh, shout out, partners. please, please. Yeah, 
So shout out to right behind me, Traeger Grills. I'm going on year 18 using them. I'm so grateful and thankful Amazing. to them as well. Uh, Duluth Trading, you guys know it. I actually opened up the last two Texas locations in Duluth uh, for Duluth Trading. I wear the clothing every single day. So buck naked for the win. All you guys, you need, you need, I'm telling you, if you're in the competition world and you don't wear the buck naked underwear, armachillo cooling undies, guys and ladies, I am telling you, go get you some or dry on the fly. I'm telling you right now, it's a game changer. Go get you some good undies uh, and shirts and, and skorts and jeans and all that too. Um, shout out to Meter and Meter Plus, uh, the new meters out there at Thermopen. Um, those are people I use regularly. My friends at Whistlepig, you know, I love you. And, and certainly everyone else out there you know, that has always been so supportive of DBQ. Uh, appreciate y'all. That's it. Thanks, Ross. All right. Thank you so much, Danielle. Uh, always a pleasure. This is the third time on here, and hopefully it's not your last time, but uh, I don't feel it will be. Uh, we'll, we'll do this again. What a great show. You you've uh, you definitely opened up for us, and, and I can't thank you enough for coming on the show one and then being so, so Danielle. Is amazing. We love you. Thanks, guys. Much love, everybody. Be blessed. Remember, take care of each other, and life is always too short for bad barbecue. Boom. All right. There she was, Danielle Bennett from DVQ. Thank you, sweetheart. We'll see you. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Uh, well, there we go. Boom. Ty's on it, and I never know when Ty's. Uh, I should just let Ty do his thing. Hey, but uh, what an amazing uh, show tonight with Danielle Bennett. Normally, we do the, uh, you know, the, uh, upcoming events and wrap up recap, but we are in there and uh, no, no, uh, it would have been cool to have her do some rate my boxes and maybe next time we'll get her to do that. Uh, but uh, man, what a great guest tonight. Thank you. Gooder gang for tuning in tonight. It's been a great show. Uh, we'll be back next week uh, right ahead of hogs for the calls. Marcio Borg is on. He's already in the comments. Uh, he was there tonight. Uh, we'll be doing some hogs for the cause preview. That's a big contest that uh, gives back a lot of great. It's a great charity uh, for for the kids, and that's going to be in New Orleans coming up. Tung Win, uh, who I'm part of uh, Team Cosmos with and Team Texas Original Charcoal, I might get him on the show as well. I haven't reached out to him yet. Just leave them at home, and uh, I don't know what that means. But uh, yeah, so we'll have Marcio on next week, right ahead of Hogs for the Cause. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure spending time with Danielle. Ty, come on here real quick before we get out of here hey what'd you up? think of that man hey, that was good I, I i love the show i i mean the story the, the the back behind the scenes that she gives i mean it's uh i i love the barbecue family i love being introdu introduced to your show five and a half years ago i mean it's it's been an outlet for me it's 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 helped me along in in me transitioning out of the military for a career so this is definitely therapy so that's why i always love the veterans that are cooking and shout out to you guys i know butter knr you know sure shot yeah sure shot Cross all, rifles. All i can Cross think of a lot rifles. of them but off the yeah. top of my head shout out to you guys awesome no after show tonight but uh Ty, thank you so much for uh, doing what you do behind the scenes. It means a lot to me, man. And shout out to the Gooder Gang. You guys always support us, and I appreciate all of you guys and gals, man. It's awesome. All right, so uh, next week we'll have Marcio on. And to close out tonight, as always, Ty will get us Case. Case, close us out, my man. We'll see you all next Wednesday. Good night to all of you wonderful people in Barbecue Nation. You too, California.